And what we're doing here is going through our regular outline, even though we could potentially change it to make it more interesting. But here's what I want to discuss with your participation. Uh, the news, a news of interest, and uh, the algorithm by Peter Shore. This time, I'm not going to do nitty gritty details. Uh, we, we went through more and more here. I should really give a better link. So if you come after, after the fact, you, you can use them. And that's what I do now today. So I'll, I'll be coming more disciplined. But in any case, let us start uh, looking at what was interesting in the recent week. So first of all, what is interesting is that, look at that. Uh, MIT, right? If I'm not mistaken, MIT is advertising this quantum computing fundamentals. How wonderful, right? So of course I go and uh, looks looks great. I go and I want to click everywhere I can possibly click. Get updates, watch demo. No, I don't really want updates in demo. But then I go down, and I look at what they are going to teach you, and what they're going to teach you is what is quantum computing and what is classical computing. Now that is kindergarten kids stuff for us, right? And uh, then discern potential performance gains of quantum versus classical algorithm. This is highfalutin language of saying that we're not going to tell you anything. But all of that, now I'm not criticizing, but all of that comes at the price of $2,319 per pop or per course. So I, I that's a bit surprising to me because all of this uh, quantum computing knowledge is free everywhere, absolutely everywhere. Uh, well, with the exception of some um, Udemy, Udemy courses. But I hope that we together will get all this knowledge and will save all this money. But it's interesting. It's interesting that there is a course probably for executives or for those who, well, I'm not sure who is it for. For weeks, that looks like for a programmer. A programmer wouldn't pay that money. So it's up to them. All right. That is first piece of news. The second piece of news is... Uh, Really, I'll tell you in the wrong order. Here, that was an interesting piece of news that goes well with this. So in fact, what I should do is I should move it, that one, that link, move it over to this one. So first news is that we get a course to learn. Another one is, uh, look, it's coming, right? here. What's coming? Well, we'll be careful reading that. This is from VentureBit, which I even saw a question, how legitimate are those guys? What kind of a VentureBit is that? That's looking like some journalist effort, but maybe I'm wrong. So what they say is uh, move over AI, even though it gets all the hype today. And here, quantum computing might be the most powerful and worrying technology. Well, with that introduction, you would want to read it. And what I read is one interesting fact. Really, there was something interesting here. They say that it's a pivotal year and that in this year will be as I say, reset year for quantum computing. What do they mean? What kind of reset? IBM is working very hard on creating better and better computers and so are about 10 other companies. Well, they say that the estimated time that it will take to make quantum computer safe encryption. In other words, nothing seriously today, but we estimate 
that if quantum computing comes to the fore and performs and delivers, then it will need to adjust all the other parts. And all the other parts, it will take some time to adjust. It won't be easy. And exactly how much? Four to six years here. Well, it will take about four to six years for quantum computing to deliver all that it promises. So they're saying, start now. That is an interesting twist because people don't react like this. They don't say, uh, oh, it takes me four to six years and the, the danger is coming after four to six years. So I, I better move. I mean, some people do, some big corporations maybe do, but that's all. That is uh, essential what it said. And as you can see, a lot of advertisement. So that leads me to think that this venture bit is really a, a search engine optimization and sell the clicks enterprise. And now they go talk about quantum computing. Of course, you need to put some words so that the engine would some have something to, to latch upon and give you those links. All right, that's it. That's all I'm going to say about this. Any reaction, you can put it on chat or just speak up. That's an interesting piece of news though, because our all, I think all of you guys here, are thinking about that it's interesting what's going on with, with quantum computing. So and therefore, well, we have some future in mind and they also do. Now there was another article here and the other article said, well, this is how humans think. They, uh, they are. They have a quantum computer inside and that is how they can know what is far away from them in no time, meaning really no time faster than the speed of light. That is a, an enticing thought. If we read the article subject, scientists discover possible connection between human brain and cosmos on a quantum scale. Sounds like just the right thing to do. That is how you can know what's going on in the world without the internet. Uh, but if, yeah, so that was interesting to look at, but then after I read it, I saw that it is just a research paper, nothing wrong with research papers. But this one says that maybe our brain thinks in fractal networks. So if you combine quantum and if you combine networks, meaning deep networks, and add the word fractal, you'll get all the hot keywords. But there is no proof. The article will delve into the research paper titled Quantum Transport in Fractal Networks. And it will suggest that maybe that is how it works, but absolutely no proof. And when you do such things, when you start thinking quantum computer, then you anyway have all kinds of insights that's well known, Zen and uh, uh, Shiva dancing and uh, all the particles. Now, I gave you three news, which are not really news, but uh, they are in some way. Now I see some chat. Any thoughts on that? And and Fred asks a question, and that's a great question. So oh, immediately what comes to mind is, uh, yes, there are free training sources, and they are found right here. So they found like IBM quantum computing tutorial quantum computer no that's mit and that's microsoft so you need to know where to go it's right here tutorials that is the answer
but what I'm thinking about is that it's a good idea to collect all of the resources because I know quite a lot of resources that I have been struggling myself when I started more than a year ago. So I think it will be a good idea to go back here and for the next time, put one of the first links here. That will be our next session. So let's put it here. Okay, that will be the session that is on the 29th. Okay, and lined to all quantum computing. Okay, so what I will do is uh, collect all of this and I will put it into our folder. So it's always there. So since you asked this question, this is our material folder. Okay, so I will collect it here. Uh, the, the document with all the stuff will be here and I will put the link to it right here. And next week, we will go through the sources and what's good about that and what books to read and why you would read. Uh, so I think it's correct and guided to studying quantum computing. Uh, and uh, people who see this line, I hopefully will trust me that it is a complete guide. So why don't I say that? As much as you can have a complete guide, it will be complete. All right. Thank you very much for asking this question because that gave me the idea for the next discussion. But let's look at what else. What else is that we wanted to be a bit more practical. And here, I apologize, we are kind of relying on you having been at the previous webinar. So I'm not every time going into the Let's start from the very beginning. That's the very first question. And I can't resist showing a case where that is true. Okay. Thank you, Fred. Cannot resist the, showing you the case where that is true, meaning that every time you come to a webinar, we start everything from the beginning. Now, let me close the door real quick so that it's very quiet. There you are. And that is the case. Now, the I have a reason to show that it's, uh, it's called Talmud Illuminated. But that's a site right here. Okay, now, of course, that's my theme because I'm Jewish and I'm studying Talmud and that describes a summary of every page of the Talmud. But unlike all other cases, here I give a summary and I do not assume that you learned anything before or will learn anything after. For example, let's say you go into a page, any page, and I start right away the substance, but you don't have to know what was before, what happened after. And if you don't understand something, and that's the reason I'm showing this to you, then you click right here and you go to AI. And there you ask a question, like what happened before the story of Rabbi, who was it? Well, I think it was now Hamnun. So again, I apologize for uh, destruction, but Hamnun means hot fish. So this Rav Hamnun, he came to the sages and they asked him a few questions and he didn't know the answer. Well, in this world, you don't know the answer, you're a goner. So they said, what, what's your name, Hamnun? You think you're hot fish? No, you're Karnun, you're cold fish. 
nothing like that. But we want to know from AI what happened before that. Will it tell us anything? Okay, as you can see, it does know. All right, that's an introduction to AI. And uh, since we mentioned the AI that uh, AI is uh, kind of moving over, maybe yes. But uh, the only practical thing that we finally come to is this. We said, are there any practical applications of quantum computing today? Because as you may have noticed, everyone is talking, oh, when they are here, they will break all encryption or or when they're here, they will cure the humanity. But that always is prefaced with, with when they are here. Well, not, not very nice. And that, that's a big, big problem because I myself taught my first course without realizing exactly where the field is and with the, where are the practical applications. Now I know, I know better. There are practical applications even today but much more in the future. If that sounds good, let me show you this. That is a quantum computing encryption device. Now we talked about, and, and it's for sale, price? Anything about the price? By the way, I filled it out, I got in touch, I said I'm teaching quantum computing, so you need to pay attention to me. Uh -huh. And uh, they got in touch and asked me, who are you? And I told them who I am, so if they do give me a demo, that will be even better. And I will show you that demo next week. But this time, uh, here you are, shopping online. So can I buy this device? basket is empty right so i think it's not that easy because uh, not everybody buys those devices non-stop i would think but some people do but we talked about why do we need such a device and and, and how so let's repeat a little bit of that let us say we want to secretly communicate the usual story is alice communicates with bob so alice wants to talk to bob or bob really wants to talk to alice and he wants to send her a message. But he is afraid that there is a certain person called Eve, the eavesdropper, who will intercept that message. Therefore, he encodes this message. For example, he says, every A will be B, and every B will be C, and so on. And, and Eve will not read it. Uh, but you need to either guess the encryption key, and there are many funny stories about that, or tell Alice what the encryption key is. In that case, in my example, A goes to B, B goes to C, C goes to D. The encryption key is easy, back one letter. There are more involved um, waves of encryption. And one of them is, uh, in Hebrew is called Adbash, which means that you take the first letter alphabet and you encode it with the last letter of the alphabet. Then you take the second letter of the alphabet and you encode with the penultimate letter of the alphabet, which means before the last and so on. Again, that's an easy key. But in real life, they need to invent some more complicated key and send Bob sends to Alice his key. That's a big problem because if he sends her the key and if the eavesdropper Gets that key, she now can listen. Okay, too bad. So they in invented the uh, uh, real encryption. And by real encryption, I mean that they have public and private key encryption, which I'm sure you heard about. Private key is what Bob gives to Alice. Alice encodes her message with this key. And private key is what Bob keeps and hopefully doesn't give out to anybody. And then uh, uh, Eve's dropper, Al, uh, Eve, Eve's dropper is out of luck. She, she gets the messages. She can even get the public key. She can even send messages to Bob, but she cannot read messages that Bob sent to Alice. 
Well, unless it has a quantum computer. With quantum computer, you can break the encryption, even that strong encryption that we all rely upon. For example, right here, okay? If I click on that, it will say, site setting cookie connection is secure. The reason it is secure is because all information is first encoded using RSA encryption and then sent. Well, that's exactly what the quantum computers will be able to break. So what's the solution? This is the solution. This is in Switzerland. And the interesting thing that the company is a Swiss company, is it not? Right? Somewhere I saw it. It's in Switzerland. Okay. They like to keep secrets. How does it work? It works based on quantum computing. So quantum computing is going to break encryption, but it is going to restore that encryption. And if you uh, remember, we talked about this last time, <clears throat> but I'm repeating it because maybe you heard that and forgot it, or maybe I didn't explain it right, or maybe myself, maybe I didn't understand it then and think that I understand it now. In any case, that device is the savior. It encrypts in such a way that nobody can break it. How does it do it? It uses what is called quantum entanglement. It says, if you have one electron here, and if I have another electron here, and they entangled, which you can think about as you took the photons and you passed them through a filter, and they acquired the special affinity one to another. So now when you change one of them, the other changes. It doesn't matter how far away it is. Now, I will repeat it because that's absolutely incredible, unbelievable, miraculous thing. I have one photon, let us say, here, and, and then the one, another one here. And if I change this one, in other words, if I am Eve, the eavesdropper, and I'm reading the state of that, and in quantum mechanics or quantum physics, you cannot read anything without changing its state. So Eve reads it because she's interested in their communication. And immediately that button that is in the hands of Bob or in the hands of Alice or both, maybe, maybe one, changes its state too. So once Eve intercepts that one bit of information, uh, we all know. Therefore, that's the solution. We send messages, but we watch. And if we see that these messages were intercepted, we drop. Well, mir miracle and magic as it is, but that's the device that does it. And now we can understand what are those numbers. Short, medium range up to 90 kilometers. That tells us how far can the receiver be from the sender and it will still work. Now, that is an amazing number, right? You can send secrets up to 90 kilometers far away. It works guaranteed secure. What else do we have about this uh, device? That it is a standard rate of uh, 14,000. Um, I think that's speed, but I'm not sure what those numbers mean, but they give us the exact uh, number of uh, information that is passed through this channel. Then it talks about that it works for any kind of network topology, that it is controlled and monitored centrally and in interoperable with other things. Well, I think that is a perfect example and quite amazing and uh, and that 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 is it for now. I will have more interesting stuff when they get in touch and they tell me about it. Okay. Any questions? Let me do this. Let me stop sharing. Let me stop sharing. And if you have any questions, then you get the chance to talk because usually if I talk, 
And if I share the screen, you, you don't get a, a push to talk, but now I am seven. By the way, I will also give uh, everybody a chance to talk. There you are, allow to speak. So, you know, in the style of uh, a radio announcement, here we are at the quantum computing webinar and really exploring the magic of uh, quantum computing and the magic of the promise. The links. What you need is this. You need this link. That's the only link that you need. And I'm giving it to you on the chat. From there, you get all the other information. In particular, you go right here and it says at the top, it says webinar folder. That is where you have all these uh, documents. And that is where for the next week, I will give you a complete guide to study quantum computing. And I will walk you through that guide. So it, it is not just a document. It will be, we'll discuss that. All right, that was the first half, what I would call the theory. What is the practice is Peter Shor's algorithm. Now, I gave it my uh, explanation of how Peter Shor's algorithm worked last time, but this time I decided to ask ChatGPT, maybe it will give me a different version. It gave me a somewhat different version, very nice. So let's talk about what is this and why it is important. Well, Peter Shore is a mathematician who lives and prospers at MIT, and he invented this algorithm. The algorithm breaks, <coughs> the, encry breaks the encryption, breaks the uh, that same encryption that we just saw restored by this device. How does it break the encryption? Uh, the encryption, our modern encryption, is based on dividing very large numbers and finding the prime factors. That is a mathematical fact. In 1994, Peter invented an algorithm that can work on a quantum computer and that will uh, be much, much faster than the classical algorithms and it will break the encryption in 30 minutes. That is the number that they quote today. So how does it work? One way to understand it is uh, uh, Peter uses a um, Fourier transform. And Fourier transform is in the world of electrical current and, and waves. And uh, since um, uh, those electrons are sometimes behaving as waves, uh, you can start understanding. So Fourier transform does this. It takes the possible answers and it uh, does a Fourier transform, applies a Fourier transform to them. With the result that the most promising results get better, bigger probabilities and less promising results get less probabilities. So you end up with a few numbers which are good candidates. And then you check those numbers on the regular computer. That's my explanation. Uh, he invented the algorithm in 1994. That was a revolution. And even today, that is the most promising algorithm. Uh, but of course, there are many, many new areas like um, science, material science, and medicine. And so there are many other areas that are promised. But this one is real. The algorithm is there. It is um, coded. We can even find how to implement it. And we can even find how to explain how it works. But that is a, a different way. And ChatGPT, they change uh, the format every time. So they changed it again. And now I had to print it to PDF to keep the formats. But let's look at what it says. Just as an example, first of all, you don't need to implement it because it's implemented. Secondly, it's not very simple. That's why I did print to PDF. You can find it if you go to that link, right? Then you can find it from there. And thirdly, today it's practically 
only breaking one number into primes and that number is 15 and the primes are of course three times five so no worries as of today but yes as i showed you yes worries as of three or four years from now okay now we can talk about what that was and i'll suggest that we will read it because it's kind of mathematical text that sometimes you get the most usefulness and most pleasure, some people get pleasure out of that, uh, uh, only when you read it as is. So it's a quantum algorithm developed by Peter Shor in 1994, and it finds prime factors of a composite number. Now, we already remember that that is the key to breaking the encryption. When it says efficiently finds, that's really a very meaningful word. That is because there is an inefficient way to find things and efficient way to find things. An inefficient way is two to the power of something. So if I have two to the power of 500, which would be how many steps I need to take or about this to break a 500 digit number into prime factors, okay? So if it is that number, then it is about two to the power of 500. And that is about, well, 10 to the power of maybe 200. Because 2 to the power of 3 is 8, so you just divide by 3. Okay, so 2 to the power of 500 is maybe about two, uh, 10 to the power of uh, 200. And how many particles do we have in, in, in the universe and in the world and how do you call it? Uh, what's uh, the closest approximation to infinity? That's 10 to the 90. That's all. That is 10 to the 90 particles in the whole world as we know it from astronomy. So when you have 2 to the power of 200, that's unimaginably more than you can build with any computer today. And that's what it means inefficient and efficient. Efficient algorithm grows ex as, a, as a simple calculation of a number to the second power, third, fourth, that's called efficient. If we're growing as n to the second, third, fourth, that's not bad. If we're going like, Two to the n, that's very bad and impossible, but only possible with, with quantum compute. All right, so problem that they solve is get a number and try to find its prime factors. And the classical limitations, as I said, that is n to the power of uh, two to the power of n on, or 10 to the power of n, it's all very big. And therefore, RSA algorithm I'm trying to remember who are the first uh, letters represent, but uh, it's okay without remembering that. So impossible. But quantum solution explained here uh, is doing it. So let's read. Shor's algorithm explains quantum parallelism and interference to find the period of a function related to n. So it's a somewhat different explanation than the one that I gave you. But it's the same thing in the sense that it's looking for a period of the function. And knowing the period, you, you get them the, the dividers, the numbers. So choose the random number, use a quantum computer to find the period. That's his algorithm with a Fourier transform. And uh, then simply use that number in this way, find the greatest common divider. So that is uh, regular arithmetic. But that use the quantum computer to find the period is the core, the essence of the algorithm. So I will say not a very good explanation, but ChatGPT is not a great philosopher. When it gets to complicated things, it just knows a lot, but um, by the way, I'm talking because I'm building the systems. Uh, I have a couple more webinars one of them is AI webinar that's right after this one. And the new one, which I have to announce, is a secure coding. And that's after this one.
you can find all of them in uh, alpha scale. Well, the implications are that you can break encryption and the solution is that you build devices that allow you secure communication. And in the end, Shor's algorithm is efficient because it uh, grows um, as n squared times logarithm n times logarithm of the logarithm of n. That all is, to me, unnecessary. It's, it's not a big deal about logarithm, but they want to be precise. What's important is that n squared, it grows simply as an n squared, and that's awesome. You know, with that speed, you can do it, okay? I think that that is what I wanted to show you. And I didn't want to do anything else. So I will stop sharing. And I will invite you to ask more questions. Because uh, we only cover so much every time. Quantum computing is special. You can keep learning it. I've been learning it for a year. I can show you the list of my favorite books and uh, uh, show the one that I'm reading now. And you can always find uh, more complicated areas or more interesting areas that you've done so far. Okay, now the next question is, what are the other short-term applications that you are aware of? I have to apologize, there are none. How do I know that? Uh, I, I, when I despaired to find one, I uh, asked a question on the, if I can show it to here, on the forum, on the Slack. I'm a member of that Slack. I need to restore it, but I'm a member of the quantum computing for IBM Kiskit Slack. And I will quote what they said. They said that, uh, we don't know. Right now we're building something, but we don't know what it will be. And then they quoted some kid's book where uh, they had a medicine for the king and the king said, well, how does it work? And they said, we don't know. We, we never built it. But when we do, then you'll see for yourself. So, practically, no applications today except for this device and uh, uh, lots of potential because uh, of the whoever controls this controls much of the world. That's why US is uh, in a big competition with China and all the world is watching. And you can search and find more about this. Send the IBM Slack link. Yes, I'll do it right now. I have not set it up on the map. So let me do this. Let me go to here and for the next time, and you can join the Slack without any credentials. Everybody is allowed. And I'll say IBM is Slack. I'll prepare it for you tomorrow. And by the way, I tried for the uh, Kiskit, uh, essentially the only quantum computing certification. Uh, and I got, well, I think 50%, the 970. So I, I can update you on that. That's the next time. Certification. I will even give you advice on how to get this certification. Uh, not completely fair advice because I haven't got it. I failed, but I always fail my first test. Not a problem. Okay, that was your next question. Your question was, give us uh, the link and I will give you the link. That will happen. All right, guys. As uh, an ancient Chinese story says, the donkey ran out of his tricks. Okay, but uh, Fred is asking more and more questions. So let's read them. What are the other short-term applications? I already said none. 
Can you please send the link? Yes, I will. Any thoughts on how quantum computing could be used to ingest more information or knowledge into the lens? Here, I will say that there is no way because quantum computing is not about storage, but about manipulating information. So quantum computing usually consists of that many qubits, which is the jargon for bits, qubits. And uh, today the record is 433 qubits, but that is very little. In other words, it's not a place to store your information. It's a place to process it. And I might be wrong on anything that I say, you know, um, th that's kind of when I was starting and training LLMs the same way. No, it, it doesn't process a lot of information. It solves only specific problems, what it can solve. For example, it can model a material, but I have not seen it. Well, I, I think I saw one article that either claimed that it can do it or suggested ways, but no, it, it's not the mainstream and nobody's talking about this. However, I will set, show you what it really is. And that means that I will include weekly webinars of Kiskit themselves. It so happens that their weekly webinars are also on Friday, also at the same time as mine, and I might lose you guys, and you'll go there. Uh, it's on the PhD level of quantum computing and uh, quantum physics, but uh, both are recorded. My webinar is recorded, and their webinar is recorded. There is no real competition. So thank you for all the questions. And you have my email if you need to write anything longer. Okay. So I wish everybody a great weekend and I'll see you next week and have a good year. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you.